Back in July 2013, High River experienced a massive flood. Although many things were damaged and destroyed in the High River flood, we were able to save some of our products. Wait until you see what I have inside the Studebaker. In this video, we will restore one of them as best we can. I'm just going to open up the door here. These all got hit in the High River flood, and I managed to rescue as many as I could. Oh wow, is this car ever dirty? Now there's only one solution to fixing those car wheels, and that of course is... Repaint. Wow, that car looks so much better now. Back in July 2013, High River experienced a massive flood. And in that flood, a lot of things were damaged. Our own old store, Monster Hobbies for instance, got five feet of muddy water all the way through the entire building. Although many things were damaged and destroyed in the High River Flood, we were able to save some of our products. So we're out here now, sitting in front of the 1951 Studebaker, where I keep the things that got wrecked in the High River Flood of 2013. And I'm just going to open up the door here. You can see I've got a collection of promotional vehicles that was uh, sold at Monster Hobbies. These all got hit in the High River Flood, and I managed to rescue as many as I could. There's like an 80s Corvette there, a bunch of Camaros. So I want to grab something with screws just so I can get them out. You can see what the flood water did to the uh, wheels on here. It ate all the chrome off. Maybe I'll grab this Corvette. Sure, why not? Yellow is nice. <laughs> this is a 1992 Corvette promotional. I don't think I'll be able to restore this perfectly but we can take it apart and see what's going on with it. Oh wow, is this car ever dirty? Here's our Corvette, it's pretty dirty as you can see. I mean, look at the windows and everything. So in order to get the screws undone, I'm gonna use this liquid wrench. And just give it a little squirt under here. Hopefully that'll get in the under the plastic. Okay, so we'll leave that for a minute and then grab a screwdriver. Has this ever happened to you? Oh, hey honey, I just came back from the hobby shop. You wouldn't believe what they had. They had this van here that's just exactly the same as how my dad's van was, but it's a Coca-Cola one and I want to build it and man, I can't wait to see what this looks like. And then you went downstairs to your workbench. All right, let's see what's in here. Oh man, this is the worst thing I ever got. Or maybe it went like this. Oh man, this is the best model kit I ever could have got. If you're looking for great model car unboxing review videos, don't forget to subscribe to us over at the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage found on YouTube. And I'll leave the link in the description below. Now I got my screwdriver ready and I laid down this cloth uh, just so that we can catch all the parts and the dirt. It looks like the liquid wrench helped a bit. And get our first screw out of here. Followed of course by the second screw. Now I'm undoing the front first for no particular reason. <laughs> anyway, okay so here's the back. Just being careful not to put pressure on this. So I don't want to crack the windshield. There's quite long screws back here. Okay. Quite big screws for the promotional vehicle. Hey Trevor, what's a promotional model kit? Well Danny, I'm glad you asked that question. A promo model kit is actually a promotional item that the car dealerships would give away when you bought a brand new car. Now, the car dealerships were doing this going all the way back to the 1950s. 
And basically what happened is you would go into the car dealership, you would buy a car, and the dealership would give you a nice box like this. And this one here says 1955 Pontiac. Now, usually it would be either AMT or Johan that would make these model kits. And they would give you this, and this would be, you know, for the kids or something like that. And when you opened up the box, inside you would get a model of the car that you just bought. Now this, of course, being a 55 Pontiac, this mold would have come out back in 1955, and this is the model as it would be. Now, the, you notice there's no wheels, right? <laughs> so this one was uh, remade later on, and I managed to get one uh, just before Johan went out of business. This is in the 90s. And uh, somehow I was going to build this as a custom or something like that, so I took out the wheels and they got lost. Uh, what you'll notice here is underneath, I painted it flat black, of course. Now, these little pegs that stick up, there would be screws in them on the original promo, but since this was a model that you were supposed to build, uh, you would glue in here. Now, this is loose, painted it flat black. It would have been white originally underneath. And you'll notice there's no interior in this. That's how it came. There is glass for the windows which of course just pop up. You can see it's very basic. Put on there with the holes and the pins underneath. I mean, you were meant for uh, little Johnny or Susie to uh, roll this thing on the carpet, so they weren't really too concerned about accuracy. Although the mold of the body and the way they've got all the trim and detail is really excellent on this thing. You do get the chrome bumpers. These are nice and smooth. They don't have the little ridge running up the center like uh, AMT 57 Chevy bumpers do. <laughs> and the chrome headlights. And of course this is your promo or promotional model that you would have got at GM had you bought the 55 Pontiac. So Danny, I hope that answers your questions on what is a promo model kit. And now let's head back to our cleanup of our 1992 Chevrolet Corvette promo. Now, there was a lot of nasty things in that mud back then. Who knows what it was. It was powerful enough to strip chrome right off of plastic. So you can imagine how caustic that was. Okay. Ooh. These even smell pretty bad, actually. <laughs> there you go. So you can see just how muddy this thing it got in the flood. Now it looks like they took a hot knife in here. So... Oh, does that even matter? Maybe that doesn't matter. Let's see, I've never taken one of these apart, so... I'm just as curious as you guys. Hmm. How did they... There it goes. Okay. I do believe those tabs just broke. <laughs> There's one back there. There we go. Whew. Yeah, you can see just how disgustingly dirty this is. But I do think there is hope. We could scrub this clean. Ugh. Man, see? Good thing I put that cloth down. Oh, I'm missing the steering wheel. That could be anywhere. <laughs> anywhere on this planet. I wonder how they got those seats in there. Okay, so let's move up to the sink upstairs and we can scrub this thing down. Now one thing with the undercarriage is these wheels and tires have to come off. And I was able to pull one off on the back, and here's how I did it for the front. So you just kind of twist and pull apart, work it through, and there. Comes out just like that. We are now going to clean up our dirty model over here that we've taken apart. 
And in order to do that, we're going to need a nice clean sink and an old toothbrush. Now remember, don't use somebody's toothbrush out of the toothbrush holder at your house and then clean the dirty model with it and then put the toothbrush back in the holder. Now that wouldn't be very nice and it's not the Monster Hobby's way. Anyway, we also have some dish soap that, of course, you can get at your local grocery store or convenience store, wherever. This is, of course, nice and soft, so it won't attack the plastic. Well, let's get going. We'll just put our stopper down. And we'll get some nice mild water here. Not too hot, because we have to work with it. And we have to make sure that the water is not too hot to affect the plastic. And we'll just put a bit of dish soap in there. Get it all nice. Now I hope that wasn't too loud for the camera. And I'm going to put some dish soap into the toothbrush itself. Remember now, don't brush your teeth with this. Okay, so you can see how this will start to get rid of the dirt. And of course, like any good soap, the dirt will cling into the foam from, of course, the soap here. And gently lift away and go away. Well, you can see just how dirty these things are from the flood. Imagine our whole town was this dirty. <laughs> I can see we're starting to beat the grime and get it right out of there. And we will look at the other side. Now you're going to have to change your water a lot of times in here because it, well, even now you can see it's getting really gross. <laughs> and splattering everywhere. There, that's looking a lot better already. Have you ever had to clean up models that got hit in a flood? If so, let us know in the comment section down below. All right, I'm gonna put the rest of these pieces in here and just soak them. I know that interior bucket is really, <laughs> really full. Now the little tail lights popped out and I don't think we should submerge them because they are smaller pieces that can easily be lost. So we'll just scrub them down here. And these are the easiest ones cleaned up. And you can see quite nice now. Now the tires, now this is something I noticed, if we pull the tire back, you can actually still see some of the chrome on the rim that didn't get eaten off. And tires I always find are the hard ones because there's something about this high river flood that just suck the dirt right into the tires. Use a little dish soap here. Scrub away. Well, in case you're wondering, I'm not going to scrub all these parts on film, <laughs> but I'll just do some key ones. Yeah, the other problem with the uh, dirt here is it goes into all the trid grooves, and that is something that the toothbrush doesn't want to really get rid of. Now, this looks like it's clean, but I've noticed that there, sometimes you can 
start spotting dirt. And especially when these dry, it, it's almost like all that dirt comes back up again and says, Hello! How are you? I'm dirty! <laughs> so, uh, you might have to do this several times. But at any rate, there. Now you can actually see that all that dirt is off and it's looking a lot better. Here's our 1992 Corvette promotional model after I scrubbed and cleaned it. I had to get a Q-tip to actually go into some of these spots just to get the dirt out, especially under the dashboard here on our interior. It's unfortunate I don't have the steering wheel. And uh, like you can see here, a lot of the parts, the dirt came off really nicely, which is quite unique to the High River Flood mud because sometimes it can actually stain plastic and whatnot. But this actually looks like how it would have come out of the factory. You can see the glass is nice and clear. Uh, the taillights came out nice. The only thing that still has High River Flood mud in it is, of course, our tires here. And I can just bring one up to show you. I don't know how well this is going to focus. But yeah, you can see right in here there's dirt. And then our tread, of course, is all full of dirt. Now, this could be a benefit to some people because this is actually adding realism into our tire. But if you're trying to have it nice and clean like it came out of the factory from AMT, this is a big problem. So I think I've got an experiment I want to try here. We'll check that out in a minute. But as you can see, you know, the caustic powers of that water really took their toll on that metal axle. This would have been nicely polished, of course. And then our wheels are completely devoid of chrome, except for inside where it was against the tire. Uh, there are some burrs and whatnot on here from when you took it off the plastic parts tree. Actually, when AMT did. And I think I'm not going to correct it on the rest of the promo because promos are known to be rough. They were just basically pulled out of the mold, slapped together quickly and then stuck in a box for the car dealers. And as you can see, like on the window, they never took any of the uh, imperfections out of it. The, the There's flash under here on the mold marks. They just basically ripped this out of the mold and stuck it in the car and away you go. Now, sadly, the flood has scratched up our windshield. So what we'll do is we will polish that out. And you can also notice some scratches up here on the roof of our car body. But again, I got it clean underneath. You can see the high gloss that this was. So this whole model was molded in high impact glossy styrene. Actually, now that I look at this, I think this might have been chrome plated here instead of black. Or maybe these were chrome plated and then got stripped like the wheels. It's very hard to know what's going on unless we look at a photo of the real promo, which of course you should be able to find on maybe eBay or something. Underneath, we got nice and clean there, except there is a rust mark in here, which I don't think I'll be able to get out. Well, I could scrape it down a little bit, but I uh, don't really want to do that. And like I was saying, the interior did clean up nice. I had to get a Q-tip to go under the dashboard to get rid of the silt and mud. But again, as you can see, there's like rough seam lines and whatnot going on in there. Again, I'm not really going to try to build this as a model car. Um, I might do that with some of the other ones that were in the Studebaker. Uh, I do have a Geostorm that's kind of cool. <laughs> I know Geostorm, you're thinking, eh, but it's rare because it's Geostorm, right? So what I'll do is I'll take these pieces out of here and I'll show you how I'm going to clean them up. Here's a solution I'm going to try for a promotional model since it's molded in this high impact styrene, which of course will give it a real gloss. I'm going to try to remove these scratches off the roof with a product called New Finish, the once a year car polish. Now, of course, no one's paying me to promote this, but I find it works well. So there's no rubbing, no buffing, but you know, it's a car wax. So <laughs> I'm going to rub and buff a little. Anyway, I've got this old rag here, which was a bed sheet, I believe. So what we do is we'll shake this up. And open the cap. And take this off because <laughs> it used to be glued in the cap, but the glue didn't work. 
Anyway, so we'll take our rag here. I'll just stick my finger in the top of the new finish. Hope it doesn't fall over. Anyway, I should put the cap back on. But for our purposes, let's see what we can do here. Now the problem with this stuff, of course, being a liquid, is that it will go into the cracks on that roof there. Um, but you can get that out with your toothbrush again. Somehow I don't think this will remove those scratches. I don't really want to go hard on this kit. But we will try to make it look a little more decent. So we'll put some of this new finish on the hood here as well. Mm. Yeah, we'll go back panel. Anywhere where the sun is naturally going to hit it. So what we want to do is just let this dry and frost up. So in the meantime, I'll put the cap back on. Shouldn't take too long. Alright, so I'm going to actually zoom the camera in here a little bit just to make this better. Now, let's see how this will work. I think I got a little too impatient here. This is still a bit wet. <laughs> okay. Now, I don't know. Um, this car, as I recall, I had a bunch of these in a showcase and I was displaying them and I think this was one of the cars in there. So the scratches on the roof might have been from it tumbling around inside the waters of the High River Flood inside my store. So I think there's some pretty fierce scratches going on here. I also think this might be molded right into the plastic. <laughs> it's hard to know what was going on at AMT in the time. But as you can see, even though it's not totally getting rid of the grossness on the roof, it is putting a nice, there we go, perfect shine into our plastic. Ah, this is drying up on the hood here. So here we go. Yeah, this is looking a lot shinier. It's not going to be perfect, of course, because of what this thing went through. You know, I had a computer that was sitting underneath the table because the, it actually was in my desk, sitting on the, not on the ground, but about a foot up from the ground, you know, on a little shelf. And we got five feet of water. So that computer got completely full of water and silt and mud from the High River Flood. So I had a computer company take it apart to see if they could salvage the hard drive. And they told me that it was so scratched in there they couldn't rescue the hard drive because it was scratched on the microscopic level. So if you put a super powerful micrometer, or not a micrometer, but a magnifying glass in there, you would see scratches at like the highest level. So you can imagine that this was in that same flood and basically all the chrome got scraped off. But look at that already. We're getting a nice bright sheen on there which would be how this came out of, of course, the factory, the molds at AMT. Wow, that's an amazing job! Now that our Corvette body is all cleaned and polished, I do believe it's time to glue these taillights back in place. So the way we're going to do that is using some testers liquid cement for plastic models and this nice little squeezable applicator. Now, of course, when AMT put this together, they just slipped these little taillights up in here like this and there's you'll notice some little pegs down there they would have just put them in place like this and then taken a uh, something hot and just touched the end of the peg but we don't really have that luxury anymore so what we'll do instead is just slip the taillights in place whoops yeah see that one the peg broke and we'll take our liquid glue here 
remove the cap and we'll just let's just touch a bit in here and that should start to glue them in might have to take these tail light lamps up a little just put a little glue around the bottom where that pin is and then set them in place so we'll just let that dry and we should be starting to see this promo coming back together so how would the new finish work on our glass that's pretty scratched up here in the front I don't know how well you can see that there we go look at that see you can see all the scratches down in here so let's give our of course our new finish let's give it a shot on that glass and this time I will wait until it gets frosty maybe I'll uh, I don't know what I can do in the meantime I'll talk to Dan I'll take Danny the dog for a walk how about that okay so I'm sure he'd like that so let's get a bit on our cloth again this time I'll put the cap on here first <laughs> okay so put it on nice like that we'll go out of focus and then we'll come back into focus and we'll go out of focus again come on camera smarten up let's go back there you go okay now there's a little crack in this window in the tail glass I noticed that too on that uh, purple 82 Corvette that's sitting in the Studebaker and I hate to say this folks but there's no way to get that out of glass so just gonna have to live with it unless you know a technique to uh, get rid of that crack and make it completely disappear in the glass without replacing it from some other kit <laughs> I don't know how many people would say that just replace it but if you know a technique I'd like to know that one write it in the comments down below hey Danny yeah uh, there's some polish drying on the windshield, so I just need to wait for it to frost up. Okay. Do you want to go for a walk? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Let's go for a walk. <laughs> Danny and I just got back from our walk, and I do believe that this is now frosty, as it should be. So we're going to take our little polishing rag, just clean it up. Danny had fun at the park, got to uh, chase a stick for a little bit. Always good to take your dogs out for a walk when you can. That is, if you have dogs. <laughs> okay, so we're going to remove all this. Give it a quick look. Already things are looking a little shinier. Mm, it's, the scratches I think are permanently going to be in there, but we can remove a bit of their rough look just using the new finish. Do you have animals? If so, let us know in the comments below. What do you have? Do they like models? Do they chew on tires like Danny the dog does? <laughs> or maybe there's, you got a cat, Henrietta Kitten, who likes to go up on your shelf and knock all your models on the floor. If that's the case, let me know in the comments below. Which, which one of your favorite models that you spent a lot of time on did they smash in 30 seconds? <laughs> anyway, okay. How does this look? 
Well, you can still see marks in here, but you know, look at that shine on there. That's a lot better than what it was. Again, there are some marks on the front. I do believe the wax did take some of the dirt away from the bottom. You can see a little scratch here. And what that correlates to is the bottom of the window. So now let's just slip this in here and take a look. Now you remember how this looked when it was all dirty, right? Well, this is quite the improvement over that. I mean, there you go. Look at how clear that is. Even though it's got the scratches, the new finish does make it look a lot better. Okay. So now, let's just zoom back here. I want to try an experiment to try to get the dirt out of these tires. So stay tuned and we'll take a look at what that is. The water in High River is hard water, which means that it's, of course, full of a lot of heavy minerals and everything else. So what I'm thinking is perhaps this dirt in the tires might come out with vinegar, because I know the vinegar will eat the uh, residue from the hard water. And I also have this nice little Pyrex clear bowl. And in the past, I've also put the rusty metal bits in vinegar, and it does seem to take a bit of it out. So what I'll do is I'll uncork our bottle of vinegar here, and I'm lucky that didn't spill all over my towel. <laughs> and we'll pour vinegar into our Pyrex bowl. I've got a lot of... vinegar is cheap to buy. You can get a like three liter up here for about two bucks. Okay, so we'll put our metal components in first. So you're going to sit right on the bottom. Put that axle in there as well. I guess I don't need to put these in. <laughs> so I'll move them out of the way. And we'll try our tires. Oh, look at that. There. Everything fits in perfect. So what I'll do is I'll just leave this stuff in. And I think in the meantime I'm going to get rid of the little bumps from the parts tree off of these two wheels. And maybe I'll prep them up for paint. Our parts have sat in the vinegar for maybe about 30 minutes. And as you can see there's already starting to get a bit of a sludge in here. I don't know how well you can see that on the camera, but I can see it with my eyes. So that means that our vinegar is actually starting to take either junk out of the metal or junk out of the tires, and it's floating up to the top. So what I'm going to do is take one of these tires out. I'm going to go upstairs off camera. I'm going to scrub it and see if it clears up that dirt inside there. Uh, but what I'll do in the meantime is leave the rest of these parts in for at least, uh, let's give it 24 hours. Let's give it a good day. So we'll see how it looks after a day. Here's our first tire after the experiment, just to see how clean it got. Now, an experiment, of course, is not knowing the results and searching for them by, of course, trying something. Now, unfortunately, I did try the vinegar on there. I only used it in for about half an hour, so the rest of the stuff is sitting there overnight. However, you can see there is still dirt in the tread. And there is a little, where is it, up in the Goodyear lettering here. Although I do think it does look a lot better than when we started. So, I don't know. Uh, I'll throw this in with the rest of the solution for that 24-hour period. But overall, I think it is quite a good improvement sitting in the vinegar. On the road in Alberta. Located near the famous hitching post, Monster Hobbies is the only hobby shop in High River. Today we're gonna visit Monster Hobbies. Welcome to the store, girls. Wow! Buenos dias! Soy Trevor Celescu, and bienvenidos to Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. They are Warhammer. Yeah. 
Pokemon cards. Magic the Gathering. Dungeons and Dragons. We have many Star Wars and Star Trek models to choose Collector from. Collector cards. And a growing model train department. Scientific projects. The guy that wants to know that. Numerous role-playing games. Board games. We also had the model bill. I love the princess castle. I love the Pachinko machine. Comic books, manga, Look, they start action figures, model building supplies, military and aircraft books, military model kits, balsa wood flying model airplanes. Not only do we have a great model kit selection, we also do many, many exciting events throughout the year. Pine car derby. Cool. Did you guys have fun at Monster Hobbies today? Yeah! And you too can have fun when you visit us at Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada, or on the internet, www.monster-hobbies.com. And remember, we ship around the world. In a minute, I'll show you the parts that we cleaned up using the vinegar. But before we do that, I wanted to show you all these little flecks in here. That is the actual rust from the screw heads as well as from the wire axles. So let's take a look now at how our parts actually cleaned up. Here's our tires, our metal axles, and our screws after the vinegar bath. And as you can see, the metal axles almost look brand new as do the screws. They're not all encased with rust and everything else. The tires did clean up a bit better, but unfortunately there is still dirt caught in the tread pattern. Uh, there is a little bit in the letters because they're sunken, and I did notice some around that edge. However, if I take this tool and just work it, I can get some of that dirt out just because it's concentrated, like here. You know, but anyway, I can work the dirt out, but on the tread, that's pretty impossible. At least with a soft toothbrush. I might be able to dig it out with a wire brush, but I don't know. I think for our purposes, this is pretty much as good as I really want to get this thing. And the mud in here will be a constant reminder that the car did go through the High River Flood of 2013. Now there's only one solution to fixing those car wheels, and that of course is repaint. Here we have our wheels just before painting and as you can see I've taken some painters masking tape and covered up the metal axle. That's so that there will be no paint trace within the model uh, just in case the paint wants to rub off as wheels are spinning. I've got them hooked up to these big alligator clamps as you can see here and to keep the clamp upright like this one I've used a clothes peg uh, just to, to act as a foot in case this wants to fall over, it can lean on the clothes peg. So without further ado, I'm going to take these out in the backyard and I am going to spray these wheels chrome silver. Here's our wheels after we painted them with the chrome spray paint. It's not really chrome, it's actually more like a really highly burnished aluminum. But you know what? I like it. Uh, you're not going to get real chrome without electroplating, of course. But, you know, what can you do? Now, normally on a Corvette you would paint inside these fins with some flat black just to make them stand out better. But because we're trying to restore a promotional model that didn't have that in the first place, I'm just going to leave the wheels as they are. Again, they do look quite nice. So let's just move this out of the way for a moment. And what we'll do is we'll pull the wheel off the axle here and then find the tire. Now one thing about these tires is that they're directional and on the sidewall you can see little arrows which point in alignment with the tread. So what we want to do is have the uh, wheels turning this way. So we'll line them up like that. So now the 
hooks when this goes forward will rotate with the rounded part going around. So again, I think these are going to look really good with the model. Let's throw them on there. Wow, this model kit looks so much better. Wait till you guys see it. All right, just one more screw. And I do believe that's got our model back together. So uh, let's go over to our turntable and see the finished result. And here we have the undercarriage of the car and you can see how nice and clean it is, especially on those screw heads, which look brand new. The only downside, of course, is the mud in the tires. But again, it looks factory fresh. Here's our 1992 Chevrolet Promotional Corvette model kit from AMT Ertl. And as you can see, after we've cleaned it up and spray painted the wheels, that it looks as good as factory new. You would never even realize that this model kit went under all that water back in 2013 in the High River Flood. So there it is, nicely polished. The only sad part is we're missing a steering wheel. Wow, that car looks so much better now that it's clean! Well, I think that brings another great video to a close. It was real fun making it, and I hope you all learned something from it. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave those down in the descriptions below. And if you enjoyed watching these videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Pound the notification button down below so that every time I make a new video, you are the first ones to see it. If you'd like to shop with us at Monster Hobbies, don't forget to check out our web address, www.monster-hobbies.ca. Again, I'll leave it in the description below. If you want to support us on Patreon, because, well, YouTube is... it We are monetized. YouTube does pay us, but it's sort of up and down based on views. If you'd like to support us with something a little more steady, visit our Patreon account like these great people here have done. Thank you all for your support over on Patreon. It's uh, pretty easy. I'll leave the link for that in the description below as well. Again, if you want to share some great stuff with us, do it on our Facebook page. And until next time, everybody, happy model building. In 1980, my dad built me a special playset that made me the envy of the neighborhood. And now, Lobot, you will teach us the secrets of the Rebel base. Oh, snap! It's getting a little too hot in this place. Chewie, we gotta get out of here. R2, bring down that elevator. Oh, man! Chewie, see if you can get this thing started.